yes, one, one second sir yeah proceed sir proceed okay so we discuss ultrasound and ct that is important the next is aspiration to identify organism i think it is absolutely mandatory before touching this patient so you must get something uh, uh, aspiration to identify and that can be done on image intensifier or can be done on the ct on the ct scan ct scan so this gives an idea what type of organism and you can accordingly act on it act on it so it is um, uh, the important in this in this is how to enter once you enter the joint capsule and try and rotate try and rotate the hip in various directions see that the, you are hitting the metal and then just withdraw a little bit and then we will be able to most of the time what happens you are in the not in the exactly into the distended capsule area and if you are not 100% sure i think ct is much more ideal you can look at this ct scan and the needle is right inside the, in the inside the capsule so you'll be able to wear suppose you can't get much fluid so people have started putting some 2 uh, to 3 cc of uh, fluid and uh, just try to move the hip and try to get the aspiration that may not be ideal sometimes you can get a biopsy true cut biopsy from the capsular area and that is possible possible to get this so joint aspiration the cells count more should be more than 3000 per hour and differential count 80% should be polyform polymorph that is the, this is the workout done by infection uh, in, uh, consensus meeting so this is another important thing from the joint aspiration if it is less than this i think uh, you uh, don't have to worry then the next newer test which were known as leukocyte ester test or uh, it is known as almost like a diabetic diabetic test and second is alpha defensive alpha defensive leukocyte test it can be just done in a 5 minutes you aspirate <clears throat> take a one drop and put it on the diabetic strip diabetic strip and it will give once it is it shows the red it will give the idea that it is a definitely is a chemical strip sensitive 80 specific 100% a slightly modification has taken place from that to alpha defensive that is much more reliable than leukocyte stress test that is called cyanovasure it is available in the in the country alpha defensive is an anti microbial peptide released by the neutrophils the neutrophil due to the action of the pathogens they will release this peptide and responsible to pathogens and this is something like 97 sensitive and 96 specific this is very important so alpha defensive is anti microbial peptide released by the neutrophils in response to pathogen and that is picked up by cyanovasure so peptides are picked up and peptides are nothing but the reaction to the uh, reaction by the organisms to the towards the neutrophils uh then the next is the culture part culture part of it so the there are various bottles available and one must as a orthopedic surgeon you should know what uh, what you should uh, which is the bottle to be used so backtech is ideal 9550 and minimum required is 5 days or 5 days and positive culture culture can be adobe can work can be till 7, seven days sometimes is the low virulence or organism you can ask your pathologist if the growth is not there ask him to continue for another 7 days and there is 20 to 30% possibility that you might grow something so, so that is known as extended culture and uh, very um, important is culture should be sent within just 20, 15 to 20 minutes after the aspiration is done or whether after the collection it can't be lying outside the outside the operating theater and the last after the last surgery then you wake up and say have you sent a culture then after this is 4 to 6 hours and that get the uh, specimen get desiccated and it does not work so it is very very important you have to ask anesthetist or you have to ask assistant immediately that culture should go in about 20 minutes time and it should go into the media whatever things are otherwise it has uh, it loses its importance sonification we uh, we were doing this sonification but today uh, i think we are going away from sonification what is mean by sonification those who do not know when you take out the implant take it by this in the sterile uh, sterile plastic plastic bag and you send it to the uh, pathologist and check should go again immediately that they put it they put it in a in a ultrasound machine and they put a water inside 
and they start moving the sonification, ultrasound sonification. The biofilm on the implant breaks with this sonification, ultrasound sonification, and there are uh, organisms under the biofilm. They come out, and then what they do, suppose 1,000 cc of their saline is there, they will centrifuge and they will just get the one or two cc or three cc and that they will put it on a culture media and that yield is very high. Only problem with sonification is how do you collect a specimen, how do you send a specimen and how they can handle this, uh, pathologist can handle the specimen. So today uh, we are not very, uh, very enthusiastic by uh, doing a sonification. So nuclear amplification technique have shown promise in being capable of detecting new and fastidious pathology. This is something new technique of nuclear amplification. The diagnosis challenge comes with a low grade infection. Literature is confusing. Patient population is different. Criteria, some people use criteria different. Some European people do criteria different. Interpretations are different. Treatment options are uh, different and staging from PGI is from MacPherson that we follow, follow the system. So today, something new has come. Uh, you have to read this because I am not absolutely familiar with uh, all this technology, but uh, you will, uh, the, the DNB students are likely to get this uh, short note, what is called next generation sequences. It is coming in a big way, and this is DNA sequencing, figuring out ordered or DNA uh, nucleotides and in geomers that makes the organism's DNA. So this is the gentleman, uh, Sanger. Sanger is the, he is the man who started sequence, sequencing, sequencing. And this is uh, known as the Sanger sequencing itself. He started way back 20, uh, almost 15, 20 years. And now the whole thing has progressed so rapidly, uh, rapidly. So next generation sequence is the next important factor. So we are going to, re we are going to get even a bacteria which are dead but DNA, DNA is there, on that DNA we'll be able to find out which is this bacteria. So we will not say culture negative, no bacteria. Today, those who are negative, culture, culturally negative, it has been proved in USA by uh, one of the uh, large institutes. I forgot the name of the couple of institutes, but I will just recollect and tell you which is the institute which is doing the largest work. So they are able to, uh, they are able to give a culture of these patients who are already negative, but they are able to uh, identify organism. Even they are able to get the sensitivity which drugs are to go on the new generation sequencing. So this is a very complicated side and you next you will have to go and uh, there are two type of, uh, I told you, targeted uh, amplicon sequences and whole genomic sequences. There are two type of sequences which we can use it for the identification of the organisms. Uh, workflow chart, I'm not going. So uh, you need to uh, you need to uh, go into the detail of next as, uh, generation sequencing. Very very important, and it is going to be a future. Uh, it is going to be future of uh, infection, and we'll be able to uh, get organisms extremely well, no problem. What are the treatment options today? As uh, once the infection you have suspected, options whether you are going to do only antibiotic separation. Second is operative debridement and retain the prosthesis when we are within three weeks. You can do this. Single stage or two stage. Single stage is uh, recommended by endoclinic, which will come to when, when to do and when not to do. Two stage is the commonest and gold standard, which we are following in this country. Resection and the last is patient is tired, surgeon, surgeon is tired of infection. Then we say resection of the plastic. That is the last resort. Uh, that is a, actually defeat of a surgeon. So the, uh, it will all depends. What is, the, uh, what is the host? What is the organisms? And what is the environment also? It depends on what tre the treatment is. It is not only one, one factor. So you have to use all combination. The host should be good. If the host is 80, 80 year, 90 year, and the gross infection or pseudomonas, you may not be able to do it. You have to consider excision. And uh, these are, again, uh, agents are also E. coli and pseudomonas. These are the worst organisms. Uh, we are not able to fight it till today. So that's why sometimes we keep our hands up if these two organisms are there. So chronicity of the virulence of the organism, status of the wound, physiological status, we need all these parameters to be looked into before we touch the patient. 
So, very early stage, post-operative, fever more than 48 hours, ESR raised, WBC count alarming, CRP is going up, pro levels are high. All this will be very suggestive of infection after 48 to 72 hours. So you do not sleep on this. Constant, I mean, this patient usually constant unusual pain. Normal pain is understandable. Understandable because there's a post-operative pain. And we are not able to drug them so badly. Otherwise, we will have renal toxicity. So if the patient has unusual constant pain, is a sign of infection. Third important thing, passive range of motion. Just keep the hip in the hand, uh, the leg in the hand. Just rotate the hip internal and external. Normally, rotations are not that painful. Flexion extension may be painful because soft tissue stretching is taking place. Rotations are painful. It is one of the, again, important sign, clinical sign. Angry looking wound. Don't allow the junior surgeon to look at the wound. If the patient is running fever for three, four days, the surgeon should himself do it and see himself how the wound is. So angry looking inflamed wound is again sign. Discharge from the wound definitely suggestive. Most of the time what happens, the surgeon goes on the round and uh, the registrars or whatever the assistants are, sir, this man is developing fever for 101. So the surgeon says that hey, the wound looks all right, this looks all right, his, uh, everything looks fine and he will just put uh, another antibiotic. The next day, again, the temperature, this antibiotic not working, you put another antibiotic. This is the way the most surgeons are doing. So what you should do, ask your colleague, you don't take a decision, ask your colleague to, uh, uh, as a second opinion. And because he was not operating surgeon, he'll be able to give a non-biased opinion. So it's very important, very important. Uh, and it should be protocol, protocol. You should not feel inferior to yourself. Ask colleague to see the patient. Very important. Why single stage principle? What is the principle of endoclinic? That is from Germany, endoclinic. It is one of the largest institute for on infections in the world. So what they have done a protocol is remove all infected tissue, foreign material. Important is biofilm. Take out the implant, throw it out. Back to the normal healthy tissue. They do debridement right and left. If they have to do the hip debridement, they will do anterior capsule, posterior capsule, everything they will do. It. So only neuro, they will even look at the neurovascular, which is uh, which is difficult for us to see. So close dead, uh, close the dead space, and what they will do after the surgery, the dead space should be closed. Provide mechanical stability with the implant. And uh, most important, their workup is they identify infecting organism before the surgery. There are a couple of organisms with the gram negative organisms or sometimes if the culture is negative, they don't do single stage. You should have uh, data with you that this is organism and they are sensitive to the antibiotic. Then only single stage works, otherwise it does not. So around 10 to 15% of the patient, their patients, they go for two stage. So it is not always one stage. Institute antibacterial therapy, uh, institute the antibacterial therapy systematically and locally that is important. That is the principle of endoclinic. Why they say single stage, the principle of musculoskeletal infection. Remove everything. So this biofilm is important. What is this biofilm is? Uh, this is the implant biomaterial, and that is the film film which is produced by the organisms. It is made up of polysaccharide produced by the bacteria. This is a layer, absolutely layer, and it is very difficult to take it out. Even you take a scrubber. You take a brush, it, it won't come out from the biofilm, it doesn't, doesn't come out uh, so easily. There are a lot of material, uh, chemical material people used that is also in, uh, ineffective, ineffective. So, uh, so biofilm is very difficult to take it out. And it provides the inner protection of the bacterial growth. It is effectively seals from the host defense mechanism and antibiotic. So vascularity is not going, antibiotic is not reaching. So once the biofilm is formed, the infection does not come into control. A lot of people feel titanium implant are resistant to biofilm. It is not. It is not. So it is less, but it is always there is a biofilm. And 
there is a method to know the biofilm tested by Christensen method, but this has not been used. This is only in the book, uh, book which I picked up. So today we have no idea of picking bio, biofilm, whether it is form or not. But as far as it's concerned, biofilms are worst, and unless you take out the implant, it will not work. So it is produced by polysaccharide produced by the bacteria and provides the inner protection. So once what happens, they are always underneath. And when the opportunity comes, they will they will open up. They will open up. The biofilm open up, they come out. So indication for a one stage, absence on immunocompromised patient, rheumatoid, highly diabetic, uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled other things are renal transplant patients. All these patients are not good. Those who are high dose of cortisone for various reasons, they are not good. Absence of clinical sign of acute infection. Absence of soft tissue defect and bone defects. Infection caused by low organism, organism and sinus may be down or may not. So most of the people are not doing with sinus single stage. So we should use this criteria. Good host, organisms are sensitive and there are no defects in the bone and the, in the tissue. So this is a good patient for a single stage surgery. And for exposure, I think best approach for all infected cases is a posterior approach, which is extensile approach, anterolateral and mini approaches are out of question. Sometimes you might require trochanteric approach. Lateral approach is inadequate visualization and serious damage to dis dysfunction of the abductor because already infected tissue, you want to excise a lot of tissue and uh, in a lot of tissue and it will not possible with anterolateral approach. You can't use the posterior capsulotomy so they are not good or good or good option. So posterior approach is the ideal approach, standard approach. And you can say it's a gold standard. Uh, operative guideline for a stage, radical debridement is prerequisite and not a definite cure. So you do debridement, wash it out, again see the tissue, debride. This is the way one, two, three times it is done. All necrotic dead tissue, implant, foreign body should be removed. Closure of the dead space is mandatory. Avoid new biofilm. This is another important thing. You need to completely cover that implant. If you leave the implant and the dead space, the film will start. Film will start. Biofilm will start. And can be accomplished by antibiotic impregnated bone cement, antibiotic loaded cancellous bone graft. So on that, if the dead space you are not able to close, put an antibiotic impregnated cement. <clears throat> and antibiotic delivery through the local and systemic means. What are the results of one stage? This is from the German Buchholz. He did the largest area at that time. Look at that, more than 500 cemented hip he, he did in 1981. 81. The success rate was only 77%. And today, if you look at the, all the data, roughly between 70 and 80%. And if the sinus is there, a uh, slightly higher rate of uh, complications are all there. So these are the, some of the, uh, some of the uh, today by and large, we are using a mainly non cemented implants, even in a, a single stage division. Why is the poor outcomes are that 30, 20 to 30%? Bacteriology, polymicrobial infection. Sometimes there are more than two organisms. Gram negative, not good, which I told you. MRSA and group D streptococcus. These are the organisms which are not good for a revision surgery for stage one. So two stage has now become almost like a gold standard. So first stage is same like what the revision, except we are not going to put the implant. Debride, take out implant, take out biofilm, take out everything, screws, everything possible. Then interval period, either we can keep as excision orthoplasty, keep in traction for a few days, or put an antibiotic spacer. We will come to do uh, come to that. What are what type of antibiotic spacer? And second stage is definitely after three months or six months that we'll come to know when to do it. Now antibiotic spacers are divided into static spacer and articular spacer. This is my own classification, which may be published after some time, but this is not given in the book. So it is a static spacer or articular spacer. All these are given, but the classification is not there. Uh, so static spacer, look at this. 
this is the uh, small ball is put in the acetabulum and a small peg peg or some uh, is put in the femur so this is called static spacer spacer now articular spacers are divided into four types articular one commercially non modular this is non modular commercial available of various sizes are available various sizes are available you this is the antibiotic usually vancomycin tetramycin all this is there inside gentamicin so this is known as commercially non modular between the for, between the 47 to 54 all varieties of size are available so what is a non modular so chances of um, uh, putting inside are sometimes very difficult then commercially modular according to the size according to the neck length whatever they want you mod you do commercially on the table on the table commercially on the do it table and that's the way you put it uh, so that the distribution rate will be low the third one is handmade handmade on the table but uh, handmade on the table on taking a small thin implant and over that we put a uh, cover the antibiotic and cover the antibiotic on the femoral head that is handmade the this handmade is good when the acetabulum has got a good configuration entry wall intact posterior wall intact there is no deficiency like this patient if there is a loss of posterior this commercial handmade commercial made or whatever made it will dislocate dislocate so this is called lfa that is like a low friction orthoplasty this is uh, uh, we learned it from uh, london clinic london clinic uh, one of the lady surgeon orthopedic surgeon what she did was a lousy acetabulum with a cemented cemented lousy acetabulum don't do pressurization just put a 36 36 uh, liner line type of liner and just put a lousy cement in the acetabulum and put a poly inside put a poly inside like a total lip but don't do pressurization because you want to take it after 6 weeks and also do a lousy cement on the femur side femur side so this is the articulation you have an articulation like a total lip but you are not pressurizing the cement on the uh, on the acetabulum and as well as the femur both both so there's a lousy cement comes here and allows the cement on the femur so that is a so it will will not dislocate so medical management interval after your debridement of spacer whatever then your medical management comes most of the time we put a central line called as a pap line that can be kept for for 6 weeks intravenous antibiotic we need to train the sister or train the uh, train whatever the people are and they need to because you can't keep the patient 6 weeks in the hospital so they have to be discharged on the third or fourth day and they will have to manage the pap line and as well as the antibiotic protocol uh, wound should be healed uh, an inflamed inflammatory marker we continuously with the uh, we start continuously every uh, week uh, we do the mark, uh, crp esr esr and our infection control uh, uh, specialist will keep the touch with the patients and uh, we, we once they are inflammatory markers are all right normally is a six weeks followed by oral 6 weeks of antibiotic followed by 2 weeks of a gap no antibiotic nothing and after 2 weeks we will do a esr crp if it remains normal then we will go ahead for the revision a lot of people uh, feel the joint aspiration should be done but it is very difficult to do it joint aspiration after this so i think it's uh, most of the time it is a lot of failure will take place uh, joint uh, knee i think is a good idea to aspirate because it's easy to do it after 2 weeks of discontinue then we will plan for surgery that is the way we work out inter uh, interval so this is one patient who had antibiotic spacer that's a lateral x-ray good acetabulum was there everything and you look at the wound is beautifully healed there was no signs of anything and then this was uh, this was revised with an uncemented hip implant is almost about 4 or 5 years to the surgery one important message most surgeons they forget and uh, when we do a first debridement what you should do you should use a non absorbable suture for the closure these are ethylon suture you can see this black suture and when you go inside for the after uh, for the second surgery second surgery you will identify the sutures and that is the area that is the area uh, that is the area where it is easy to expose very easy to expose the uh, area so this is one important trick for all of you that 
uh, after doing debridement, antibiotic spacer, whatever, use on tensor fascia and capsule both use ethylon non-absorbable suture. It becomes so easy to open the open because you don't have to hunt where where you are opened up. Otherwise, a lot of scarring will take place. So this is one of my own patient, and you see the scar. Uh, see this, and I was able to expose very uh, without any difficulty without any difficulty exposure possible. And that's a follow-up of this girl, young girl. Antibiotic illusion. Uh, a lot of, when we put an antibiotic at the, at the time of uh, primary surgery, what about the illusion? I think gentamicin is, has got the maximum illusion. And usually, if you look at the, it's only about three weeks maximum, three weeks. After that, it drops down. It starts with this MIC, MIC value and it drops down gradually, gradually. Only after ten, uh, after three weeks, actually, there is nothing. The, the antibiotic does not usually work. Antibiotic spacer stops the antibiotic illusion. That is one important thing. You uh, don't be under the impression you have put antibiotic, it will work for three months. It doesn't work. It becomes totally, uh, it becomes a normal implant after that. Uh, avoid uh, avoid articular spacer in extensive bone loss, which I told you. Instability of the spacer, poor abductor hip, the high rate of dislocation. That's why this is one of the pa patient has already dislocated because the abductor was poor, astamble was poor, even the knee get dislocated. Use of uh, articular and non-articular spacer in the hips, both articular or non-articular spacer are articular spacer better for exposure. Because the moment, moment mobility is good in these patients, mobility, and it's very easy to expose this patient. And patients are mobilized well, so they are psychologically also, they are walking around, they are using a little bit of activity with a walker. Patient can be mobilized. Irradiation of infection is 91% with articular, 87% with non articular not major difference. No major difference between these two, handmade and company made. It's almost, almost like the same. So whatever is possible, uh, possible you can use. Uh, monitoring infection resolution, clinical pain, swelling, wound healing problem, hematological, I told you, serial tests are predictive, not one test is important. It has to be serial. Normal values are reassuring. One third of the patient, this I got a, something, uh, a very uh, important message for all of you. One third of the patient's value are high in spite of infection is cleared. But CRP ESR has not come to the almost to the baseline. This is one of the paper from uh, uh, General of Orthoplasty Shukla reported that. So we were not knowing actually this important paper. So we need to also go on the clinical and these patients you must aspirate. And when you take on the table, you should tell the patient's relation. Likely that we'll be able to do it, but there is a chance. So you should take a written consent. This is a very important message, which I was also not aware. Medical management interpreter, IV antibiotic, which I told you, oral rifamycin has been added if the bacteria are glycoside gly forming. This is one additional new thing which has occurred last two to three years. We have been using rifamycin for these patients. Second stage usually delayed for six weeks. Uh, this is one patient, very huge lady, way back, almost 10 years back, 10 years back, this lady had an infected bipolar. I took it out. And then this is one another important sign for infection. The cement piece comes out like a single piece, like a cigar. This is 100% suggestive infection. 100%. Unless otherwise proved. This is because all infected tissues are like a granuloma all around them and it becomes a loose. Aseptic loosening does not do this. The cement comes out in a small fragments. And a septic loosening. And a septic loosening, the whole piece will come out like a cigar. This lady was huge. I never thought I'll be able to do it. So I left it as an excision orthoplasty. And this lady landed after six months or one year. Doctor, you have to do something. Uh, whatever is the risk factor is, I am ready to accept it. Uh, ready to accept it. And finally, I, she was forced me to do this surgery. And fortunately, it did very well. Is almost eight or nine years to the post surgery, and I did, did this lady uh, after one year of the excision orthoplast. It is sometimes difficult to bring it down, but you require a lot of soft tissue release. The with the sinus, I think it has to be two stage, which I told you. This is one such patient who had a discharging sinus, 
discharging sinus look at the gross infection gross infection all the signs are possibly are there here erosion sinkage all osteolytic areas i used the antibiotic in that time i used the antibiotic spacer with a bipolar on the femoral head i didn't do it as i almost about this is 15 years back when i was working in mumbai and i used the bipolar at that time touch wood the bipolar didn't work, didn't happen at that time and after four months i revised this gentleman and everything went on well so for very sinus two stage procedure so what are the results of two stage procedure uh, we looked at the one stage they were about 70 to 80% this is 10% better 10 to 15% better for two stage a lot of literature suggests a 90 to 95% results are good in results are good even at 5 years 4 years 5 years if this works for 4 to 5 years i think the chance of the chances of infection are less likely Uh, anything under two years, don't take it. Uh, you have to take it seriously. Follows, and this is one of the long-term data coming from Clive Duncan. This is the man which I told you worked very hard how to prepare antibiotic spacer. One of the greatest things work uh, Clive Duncan had, and the Clive Duncan uh, second contribution was periprosthetic fracture. So he looked at his 99 patients. Look at this follow, 15 years, and there's a prostola. the commercial made prostolac 11 reinfection seven he did a repeat as seven he did a 11 reinfected out of that he repeated the surgery and seven were successful only four or five patients were unsuccessful so overall result were in 89% with repeat surgery 96% this is a data coming from clive duncan uh, from vancouver so results of one stage to two stage versus i think uh, don't have to worry as i told you sometimes some organisms are likely to come after a couple of years couple of years so we don't know sometimes they were hematogenous or they were low grade infection especially e coli this is one such patient of mine 2005 i did a surgery for the, uh, this was infected very classical sign all of you can see here periostitis osteolytic lesion cortical break this is periostitis that's the uh, endostyle scalloping look at the endostyle scalloping this is a classical sign classical sign of and this implant was uh, uh, some uh, send lover cup and uh, it was gone out of the market so what i did uh, i had no chance because uh, this was mainly a femur was infected so what i did i had antibiotic spacer i put i had to put a window there to take out the cement down it healed beautifully and then i converted this hip after a couple of years and this patient was a gaucher disease gaucher disease and from 2005 to 2013 he had no problem so almost about how many uh, uh, almost about couple of years and he landed again with a discharging sinus and this is sinograph and infected finally we have to take out the implant so some organisms are going to be notorious notorious and that time we have to say is this patient had already couple of surgeries then patients are tired surgeons are tired then you might have to consider excision of the plastic and which is a permanent solution immunocompromised patient resistant organism multiple cellular fragile dementia and we sometimes we do this as a defect as excision of the plastic this one important again thing are now the antibiotics have been started getting resistance of all the antibiotics 1950 we started with penicillin staphylococcus aureus uh, sir i uh, last slide okay okay proceed proceed sir so penicillin resistance then this is the resistance are coming and the new future we are looking at the antibiotic sensor implant which may be in the future the implant with antibiotic and anti antibiotic free properties clinical app uh, application of vaccine biofilm enzymatic enzymes and laboratory already trials are going on so varieties of antibiotics are loaded here and whatever the organism is there it automatically will release that antibiotic that is the way the new future may be possible possible and they already trials have been there thank you thank you sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much Uh, tomorrow we'll meet at the same time sir ah okay okay thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you sir bye bye, bye.